Hey guys, welcome back. On today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at automatic slug generation inside filament forms. And I'm going to try to give you guys all the tools you need to build this on your own and even improve or enhance it later on if you want. So let's get right into it. Now, the general behavior we want in kind of automatic slug generation is if both these fields are empty and the user starts typing in the title, let's say, uh, hello world, we want our admin panel to automatically basically generate this, this log and maybe have it be, let's say, all lowercase hello world, right? Underline world. So how can we go ahead and actually do this? So let's move to our code. On the right side, I have basically the resource for this page. It's a very simple category model. It just has these four basically columns, okay? But we are mainly focused on title and slug, right? Okay, so this is the text input we are using over here. Now, in order to actually perform or automatically generate it, there is a method that Filament provides to us that we can call all on, on all our inputs, and it's called after state updated, right? There is a couple of more like hydrated as well, but in this case, we are interested in updated. And you can kind of tell from the name, basically, this will go ahead and call a callback or a closure you, that you pass into it after this value has been updated on our backend, right? So after we receive an update to it. And as an argument, as you can see, guys, if you look at the uh, kind of method definition, it accepts a closure. So we can go ahead and pass it in an anonymous function. So I'll go ahead and I'll do that just like so. And basically anytime our title is updated, it will go ahead and actually call this callback, right? Now it also accepts a couple of arguments. I'll get to that right now. But for now, just to test it, I can go ahead and do, let's say dump, and just put some you know message inside here so we can actually confirm that it works so if i go back and uh, i'll type something in so again the value has to up be updated so right now if i just click save we don't see anything but if i type something inside the title and then click save we actually get the dump right so this is only executed if the value of title got changed now there is one flaw with this and as you guys can see as i'm typing in live it isn't actually triggering the after state updated right which is something we do want so it only calls that after i click save changes right now if you have used live wire i do have a live course as well if you guys are interested but basically in live 3 the default behavior is uh, as you type something in it does not send any server request right so it only sends it after you perform some sort of action so in order to make this happen as we type in we need to go ahead on our text input and call another method of live. And this is exactly kind of identical to live wire live. And what this will do is it'll make it so it will update the state of our form as we type in. So now if I do a reload and I'll type in, as you can see, the moment I type something in, it is actually calling after state updated. Okay, so if you want these to happen as you type in, go ahead and give it live. Now, if you are familiar with live wire, Liver does have a on blur and debounce as well if you guys have used it so if you want to define those as well you can actually go ahead and do it inside this uh, live method as well right in this case i don't want to add on blur or debounce i guess maybe we could add on blur no harm in that but again these are optional okay so i'll just go ahead and set on blur to true and the way on blur works is it will go ahead and send the request let me reload it will go ahead and send the request after you kind of focus out of the input right now it is focused as you guys can see kind of the with the green orange borders the moment i click outside it will go ahead and actually send the request right so basically it's blurred out right now now i'm focused i blur it out again boom sends the request so that's for the live so this is another step we need to kind of know about and we haven't covered so far throughout the course okay so now that we have covered this the next step for us is basically inside this after state updated callback we want to go ahead and get the value of title, convert it into our slug, right? Basically remove the spaces, add underline, whatever you want, and then go ahead and update the value of slug here, right? So how can we go ahead and do that? Now, currently with the setup we have, we are not actually able to do that. So what we need to do is we need to go ahead and add a few arguments. These are optional arguments to our function or closure, which will actually help us do that. Now, the way a filament works, it gives you the ability to inject some optional arguments here. So these are automatically injected if you actually have defined them. And there are quite a few of them. So for now, I'll just go show you guys the ones we need for the slug. And later on, I'll show you guys some 
other extra ones which you may want to use later on okay for more advanced cases so the first one is a variable of type string again the type hints are optional but basically it is called operation and the names here are important so if you don't use the exact same name then Philman does not know what to inject although i don't like that about php but again it is the way it is next up we have another variable called state and this one is also a type of string again the type hints are optional what really matters is the name of the argument or the variable and last but not least there is another one called set okay and i will explain exactly what all these three do in a second and this one if you want to type hint it, it is of type forms set right so it is filament forms set and i think i already have filament forms uh, imported over here so that's it right forms set so the operation let me go ahead and dump these so the operation is basically the current operation we are doing and there are basically create operation edit operation like view operation generally you're only going to have creation and addition right so that's the two possible operations next up we have state state is the current value of the text input we are running this after update stated on so it's going to be the value of title okay and then set it's a class that basically gives us the option or the ability to update other text inputs or other inputs we have so if you want to update the slug you need to go ahead and use this set variable if you want to update text color again we can go ahead and use the set object okay and i'll show you guys how that works in a second as well so for now, let me go ahead and dump these so you guys get a better understanding of how it works because I don't want you to just copy paste the code. I want you to actually have an understanding of why we do that. So if I go back and again, we do have live here. So I'll just do a reload and I'll just type something in. Let's say hello world and I blur out of it. So I click outside and as you can see uh, for the first one, we get edit, right? Which is what we dumped operation. So operation is basically the operation we are performing. So it's going to be edit and i'll show you guys the create as well in a second and then the second one we are getting hello world with a w okay and that is basically state right so as you can see hello world is whatever i just typed in uh, inside the input okay so that's for the first two arguments and we'll cover set in a second as well before we do that let me show you guys uh, for creation as well so i'll go to the create page and i'll type something in And as you guys can see, it is showing create. So the main two possible values for you is going to be edit and create, right? And it is useful if you want to, for example, perform some operation only on the edit page and maybe some others on only on the create page. So you may want to go ahead and use this. And if you don't need it, just remove it from the arguments, okay? These are optional. They are injected if you actually define them inside the function kind of arguments list, okay? So now that I have removed it, the code will still work, okay, but it just won't inject operation. It is still injecting uh, state and set, which is also the name, why these names are important. So again, filament isn't doing magic. You need to actually make sure the name is correct. So instead of state, if I, I don't know, rename it to data or date, okay, now it does not know what to inject, right? So if I now try to type something in, click away, it's actually giving an error uh, like, what is date again filament does not know what date is so the name here is very important it has to be exactly state the order does not matter as well so if i move the order and i'll move this guy over here that does not matter you can basically define these in any order you like so now if i type something in click away it still works so just something to keep in mind make sure the variable names are there that's the most important thing again type hints are also optional in php so even if I remove those and I'll try again, I'll put something in, the code still works. So just something I want to mention so you guys have a better understanding of this. I'll just reload back to the initial code we had. Okay, so now that we have this, guys, uh, I'll go, I guess we can do it inside the creation page. Basically, we need to see, we need to, as the user types in, we get the current value. We convert it to a slug and then we update this slug form so let's go ahead and do that i'll get rid of these dumps because they are a bit annoying so in this case all we have to do is we can now go ahead and use this set that i showed you guys and the way you use it you do dollar sign set and it's kind of used similar to a method and then after that the first argument you need to pass in what you want to update so in our case we want to update 
this uh, slug field. So I'll just put in slug. And then the second argument, you probably can guess, it's the value you want to update it to, right? So in this case, I'll just hard code it uh, to my slug. I'll update it in a second. So basically, that's how you use the set object over here, okay? You just use it similar to a function, and then it will go ahead and actually update any of the fields you have defined. So if I go back and I'll just type something in, and I blare out, as you can see, this becomes my slug. Now, in this case, obviously, we want this to be based on our state value. So uh, Laravel actually does have a helper method that does this for you. I already is part of the kind of a string helper. Okay, so what we can do, guys, is we can just go ahead and use this. str. It's a static call called a slug, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Okay. And then I can go ahead and pass it in the value of the title. So I just type in state. And that's all we have to do. Okay, so let me go ahead and save this. Of course, you can go ahead and define your own slug generation method. I'm just using the one that comes with the Laravel uh, string helper class. So let's go back. Uh, we don't need to reload, but I'll just reload just in case. I'll type in uh, hello world. I click out of it because, again, we have on blur. If we didn't have it, it will just happen automatically. And as you can see, it became hello world. If I update it again, it's auto-generating it for us. On the right side so that's basically how you can generate an automatic uh, slug generation code right now one additional thing you may want to do guys is in case you have already created a category let's say or a resource generally on your edit pages you do not want it to change so let's say i already have generated this and i have the urls for it maybe people have bookmarked it i do not want this to change on the edit page so even if i change the title I still want this to be the old value on the edit page, okay? So I don't want it to automatically change. In those cases, again, we can go ahead and use this operation variable here, right? As I said, this was optional, but what we can do is, again, we can go ahead and add a simple if statement and do something like, say, operation. If it is edit, then we can just go ahead and return, right? That's all we can do. So this will basically go ahead and apply only on the create page. So now that I have done that, if I reload and I'll try to type something in and I focus out of it, as you can see, this log value is no longer changing, as you guys can see. Okay, so that's the basics of it for slug automatic slug generation. Now, if you want to kind of uh, improve upon this a little bit more and want to know what else is possible to inject here, there are a few additional kind of arguments you can add. So then one more thing you can do, guys, is there is another method or a class called get. And if you want to type hint it, it is going to be of type form, forms get. And again, this forms is technically uh, filament forms get. And you can kind of guess what it does. It is used to get the values of other fields on the page. So this state is only giving us title, but maybe I want to use the text color as well. How can I get the text color value? Well, I can go ahead and use this get. So the way it works, I can go ahead and I'll show you guys. I'll do dump here. I'll just comment all of these for now and I'll do dump again the use case the way you use it is similar to how you use set so you do dollar sign get you use it similar to a method call or a function and then the value you want to get so in this case I want to get let's say a text color okay so I'll do text color just like this and again this is going to get the value on the form right so now if I go back and we can try it out my text color is asdf so i'll just and since after state update is one is called when i update the title i just say test i blur out and as you can see as you guys can see we are getting asdf so get can be used to get other values on your field right now there is a bit of a gotcha with this so if i were to go ahead and update the value of text color to updated uh, text color for example and i then go ahead and try to you know see it again s2 it is still giving me asdf and the thing about get is it is going to be using the value the updated value so since text color is not live the, the dollar sign get is going to give us the old value so if you want this to be live or give us the up the latest version we need to go ahead and also make text color be live as well okay so you do need to be careful about that if it is something you, you want this to be the latest version or whatever is on the form itself you need to make sure your text inputs 
are also live, both of them. So now that I have made text color also be live, if I try one more time, I'll make this one be updated color two. And now I'll do taste two. As you can see, it is now giving the updated kind of latest value to me. Okay, so that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, there is one more thing you can also inject. Uh, this one is a little bit also optional. I personally haven't used it that much, but you can also go ahead and if generally if you have a resource page, you are working with a model. So you can also inject the current model itself as well. And the way you do that is, again, you just basically have it be the name of your model. So in this case, it's a category. I'll just say category. And this one is a little bit special. So what I can do is instead of dumping this, I can go ahead and dump dollar sign category. And let me move this to a new line so you guys can see we have too much on the screen. So I'll just move these into a new line. So we have added this new category argument as well. Again, these are all optional. Okay. Yeah, now it looks a bit nicer. So if I go ahead and dump this now, let's try it one more time. I'll do test. It is now giving me a bit of an error. So this one is a bit special. This one is not based on the name, but it's actually based on the type hint. So for this one, I do need to go ahead and add the category model type. Okay. So make sure you actually type hint this one if you want to use it. Generally for me, a uh, get is enough, but maybe you want to, you want the entire model. If that is the case, that's all you got to do. Basically go ahead and type hint it. And now if we go ahead and we try it, as you can see, we have the current model we are working with. Okay. Now this only works on the edit page. If you try this on the create page, obviously it does not make sense. But if I go on the attributes, as you can see, I can get the ID, the values, everything else. Okay. So this is also one extra option in case you need it. But, you know, you can also use get to do the same thing, right? Use the get and then find the model as well. Okay. So that's it. And let's also try it on the create page so you guys can see how it looks. If I type something in, it basically gives me an empty category. Okay. As you guys can see, uh, it doesn't have any values. The original and attributes is empty. So it's not going it to give you an error, but it's going to give you an empty category or whatever your model is. So that's all the useful kind of arguments you can use generally with after state updated. So if you guys have any questions, you can ask me in the comment section below. Let me go ahead and reset it back to the original code for the slug generation. So for the slug generation, we only need these three and that's the code for it. If you guys want to kind of copy it, I will also make sure to include a GitHub gist in the description if you guys are uh, interested on basically how this code works. So that's it guys hope you enjoyed today's video if you uh, i hope you learned something new as always make sure you like the video that's the best way to su support the channel and you also subscribe and i see you guys on the next live wire and uh, sorry next filament video have a great day bye